Uh, and that will come in the future. Get him! Let's see that tower get him. Oh yeah, you're not. Hey guys, and welcome back to Terror Tech with me, Tenzin. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I hope you're doing pretty good. If you guys liked today's episode, please like and share as you see fit. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. So, uh, in the last episode, we did like, you know, we went looking for loot crates. Probably the best way to find lots of resources quickly, right? Um, but you have to do the quests, and the quests take time. Um, but I still think it's worth it, uh, especially, like, I guess, when you max out the grades. It's kind of not because there's not going to be that many quests, but uh, from beginning to end, on the amount of quests that you'll be completing, you should get a lot of resources, depending on whether or not they give them to you right off the bat. I think they say they are available in grade one, but I might be wrong on that one. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, fig I'll figure that out and let you guys know about it later. <laughs> but as of right now, um, yeah, they still have a little bit of a bug with the with the, um, uh, what are they called? The lots of silos, that's it. Seems to only be the, or what is it, the Celestial, or the Celestine and uh, Iridian crystals that are causing the problem where they just drop from the resource pads. None of the other ones seem to be doing it, but um, actually, no. Yeah, I was about to say, well, maybe over here. But no, it's not because of that. It's because these resources weren't needed in crafting. Now, uh, in the last episode, I thought we found another dropper. We didn't. <laughs> we lucked out and we got... Where is it here? Uh, I just put it in here. Where did it go? Uh, maybe it's under everything because they don't know what... What set it is? Yeah, okay, it's under everything. So I got the pacemaker, pacemaker block. Um... <laughs> I, I showed you guys this one in the R&D not too long ago, and if you haven't seen it, it allows you to control the speed of your conveyor belts, which is super awesome. So let's see, what do we need to load up? Uh, what is this one? No, I know. It's the resource. Titanium. I should know that. Or Titanian. <laughs> Why do they have to get such weird names? Anyways, um, 120 might be too much for that, so let's go 24. So let's go like that. Now, uh, with, the, with the pacemaker block, it's supposed to work anywhere on your conveyor belt. So let's uh, slow motion everything. And as you guys can see, it's nice and slow. This uh, allows you to find out those uh, the hiccups in your conveyor belts, which is gonna be mm, probably pretty good later on when uh, fabrication bases get really, really complicated. Uh, so then we'll go to normal speed. Which is just well, obviously normal. You can pause it if you're like uh, this titanium was about to go to a hopper or I mean a payload terminal or somewhere where it wasn't supposed to. You can stop it, change the conveyor belt beforehand and not have to worry about it. But let's see what happens when it double times. Ooh, it even, uh, nice, it even affected the fabricator that way. <laughs> Alright, you guys ready to see some stuff getting crafted? Because I am. I did I did this a little bit and it is awesome. Okay, so we'll put it on repeat craft. It's gonna be super fast. Uh, don't crash. <laughs> Here I'll put this one on super. And it's... see, it pauses for a second because the whole the whole conveyor belt system needs to think. Look at that, hey. <laughs> I'm so glad they gave us something like this. Um. As you can see, this is going to make uh, crafting, a, you know, a world of difference in crafting. Bases are going to be, you know, you're going to be able to make the bases a little bit bigger, like bigger distances between uh, resources and the fabricators, because you're not going to have to, you can, you, can, you can double time it like this, right? Um, look, look at that. <laughs> okay, we better uh, stop this or actually I bet you're probably already running out of resources. Boom. <laughs> so anyways, I was going nuts. I was doing that quite a bit. Uh, I really, really enjoy this block. I can't wait until it's 100. Like, it's in the my version, but I can't wait until you guys that play the stable version get to try it out. It is super awesome. 
Um, and yeah, it just changes everything about fabricating, right? Before it was a slow, tedious process. Now it's a super fast um, process in which, you know, you could have, a, you know, we could actually have four or five lots of silos with just all resources going through. Um, a fabricator, like let's say you put a fabricator over there, like right there, you could speed it up so that it scrapped everything. All right, sorry, put a scrapper there and then just scrapped everything and shot it down and this way, be here in a matter of seconds, right? But anyways, <laughs> oh, that, see, now you see it and you're like, oh, that's so slow. It's so slow, I'm bored. <laughs> anyways, um, I did try, or I have been trying out the Hawkeye rotor fans, um, or the medium rotors, I think these ones are. Let's go. I think we have everything selected so yeah uh yeah so these are the medium um rotors i'm not 100 percent sure what i'm doing wrong here but there is something going on um as you guys can see i have it set up kind of like we do with uh with our drones or our quad copter quad copters so i'm not 100 percent sure but uh it might be that because i have all four of them on in one spot like on the back here it's messing everything up, um, but I'll show you what I mean and what I'm thinking of. Okay, so I put these <laughs> these uh, tail wings on here, or the plume wings, um, one on each side, just to help steer a little bit. As soon as we take off, it kind of it goes nice and flat, and then it really wants to dig in deep going forwards, but to turn, and which I'm trying to do here, it really doesn't want to let me do it. Um, it wants to let me go. Uh oh. Who's Hawkeye? <laughs> uh, but yeah, as you guys can see, I'm trying to turn. But literally, it's it's really, really hard to. And uh, I'm not 100% sure why it's so hard. Uh, maybe I will try this. Like, maybe this fan has to be over here. And this one needs to be over here, kind of thing. Um. We could try something like that. Hold on. I thought it was going to be harder than what it looked like. It was going to take a little more time than what it is going to. Uh, if this is what's causing the problem, I'm going to laugh. And then I'm going to blame each and every one of you guys. <laughs> okay. There. Now, it'll be the same in the front, too, so... Okay, for a second I didn't want to move. Alright, so let's see there. We'll just try like this at first, and then we'll uh, we'll just keep changing as we go. Alright, it looks... It's a little more stable. It doesn't want to flip over. Mm, not as much, sorry. We do not want to be anywhere close to that guy. Unfortunately, we're flying right over top of him, right? And he's targeting us. Now, of course... Uh, thank goodness we... Uh, we went with uh, the sh Hawkeye shield bubble. And we're able to take a hit from that guy. Alright, you guys. So I think I kind of came up with a solution. Um... It's working at the moment, but it's not perfect, right? Uh, I think the big problem is that I made the the craft too heavy uh, for our very first attempt at trying to get these things to work. Sorry, I'm just grabbing these things that I actually can in the background from destroyed techs. <laughs> but uh, so what I did is we did move the four rotor or the uh, rotor blades out to the edges, which seems to have helped a lot uh, to be more stable, so it's wider. Um, I moved the five way steerings further out from the nose. And we just left the ones that are in the center. But I also added two more Hawkeye rotor fans here in the middle, which helped. And it helped us actually uh, become more unstable, I guess you'd say. We can recover now from when we're falling a little bit, um, which is, I guess, what we needed because we needed to make ourselves unstable for us, us to become stable. One second, we'll just anchor in and get some power. But I also put a Venture... Uh, Nose propeller right here. We, uh, we needed just a little more lift in the front. Uh, what I was having the problem of is we would start 
kind of uh, going nose down. And then when I tried to stop us from going nose down, it wouldn't allow me to. So <laughs> we just needed just a touch more power. But uh, we're going to have to spend a lot more time with these uh, trying to figure them out. But I just want to show you guys how it looks and how it works at the moment and kind of how close we are. It is kind of close to what the drone is. Um, I think I was kind of... I, was, I think I was expecting too much. Um, oops. Just because I, I think I was trying to think of like you know they're gonna it's gonna act just like the drones or the quadcopters, but it's not going to right. So it's gonna take off nicely. Uh, we're gonna press forward to get the nose down, and you need the nose down in order to turn. But the turning radius on these is a little bit different. Yeah, uh, it's not as sharp as the quadcopters. You're not going to get that like zero point turn, but you are going to get that hover, right? So I don't know what's more important, the hover or the zero point turn. Uh, for me, I think it's more or less the hover, right? Not to mention the lift capacity of this is a lot more than what um, the quadcopter can even handle, right? The little Hawkeye rotor fans like... We just made this skin and bones uh we'd be lifting a lot of weight uh but unfortunately i overdid it as per usual and we're too heavy <laughs> but as you guys can see we did uh, we did fix it a little bit um i do want to perfect this uh, and that will come in the future get him let's see that tower get him oh yeah you're not kind of stumbled in the wrong place there buddy and the game over not quite there it is <laughs> all right so yeah <laughs> so we've been doing a lot uh like uh i guess uh experimenting in the last couple episodes so and we're gonna keep doing it um i hope i hope you guys are enjoying it um i'm kind of learning a lot and also just so you guys know i only put wheels on the front of our uh helicopter here uh that way when we land we just it doesn't move um, I'm pressing forwards right now. You guys can see that five-way steerings are moving. And we're not moving at all. We could probably turn a little bit. Nope, we can't. So you don't have to worry about it rolling away. We also have the anchor ability, but just in case they take that away from us, um, just keep that in mind. Just take the back wheel out, and uh, that should be good. Usually, we don't use flyers for, you know, running around on the ground anyways, so... <laughs> it's just uh, kind of handy. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode, you guys. So if you guys liked the episode, please leave a like, leave a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.